In this problem, we're given a little bit of information about an alpha and a beta. So we're told that sine of alpha is going to be three fifths, this nice ratio going on here. And we're also told that alpha is in the first quadrant between zero and pi over two. Then with cosine of beta is equal to negative five thirteenths. And we're told that this beta is in the third quadrant. So it seems a little intimidating uh, given this information about which quadrants we're in. Um, but through this example, our goal is we want to use the sum identity for sine, cosine, and then tangent in a second. Now, the work on these is pretty similar. Um, the big key, though, is using this information that's given to us. And what we're going to do with each one of these pieces of information is we're going to create separate triangles. We're going to create one right triangle to go along with alpha, and we're going to create a separate, separate right triangle to go along with beta. So these are just right triangles I'm drawing out here. And this is not the only way you could go about this. You could go about this and use the uh, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean identity to help you out along the way. But I'm gonna get started and I'm, I'm gonna draw separate triangles, one for alpha. So I'm gonna place alpha down here in this bottom right-hand corner. And I'm just labeling my triangles to get started here. So with sine of alpha, we know that that's gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So just labeling the sides of our triangle, three and five go on these respective corners or on these uh, side lengths. And to fill into these formulas, what we're gonna need to know are all this different information. We need sine of alpha, but we also need cosine of alpha. And when we get down to our tangent identity here with the sum, we're gonna need the tangent of alpha as well. So with that, let's go back up to our triangle. We're gonna need our other side length here. So I'm gonna first label this as just being A. Um, you can pick A or B, but I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus three squared B squared equals C squared. In our case, that's gonna be five. With a little bit of algebra here, we're gonna solve down for A. So A squared plus nine equals 25. We'll subtract that nine, move it to the other side and get a 16. At this point, we'll go ahead and apply the square root to both sides get rid of that square and get A all by itself. So in this case, we know that A is gonna be four. This also allows us um, to find cosine of alpha based on SOHCAHTOA, um, cosine is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna go four over five. We'll take into account in just a second, the quadrant that alpha sits in. Um, and we'll do something very similar over here with beta. Uh, tangent is gonna be opposite over adjacent, so three over four. And now let's take into account alpha fits into the first quadrant. So kind of going back to how I like to remember this as all students take calculus, um, everything in the first quadrant between zero and pi over two, everything's gonna be positive. So these are gonna be positive ratios over here. Next, let's move over to our beta. Um, and as I draw this, I'm just gonna put beta in the corner over here, uh, being this angle. And I'm gonna label my sides, kind of disregarding the negative part going on here. I know that cosine based on SOHCAHTOA is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So I can say five goes on the bottom and 13 on the hypotenuse side. Next, I wanna find B, uh, this other side length basically, so I can get sine and tangent of beta. So very similarly, we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem five squared plus B squared equals 13 squared. So five squared works out to be 25 plus B squared equals 169. We'll subtract the 25, move it to the other side. So 169 minus 25 is gonna be 144. Again, apply a square root to both sides. Not worried about the positive and negative for the time being. I'm just going to put 12 on this opposite side length. We will take into account positive and negative in just a second as we set up um, sine and tangent based on this quadrant that we're in. All right, so we want to find sine of beta. So sine of beta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse and tangent of beta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so opposite over adjacent. Now's where we wanna really be careful about the sign on each one of these, positive or negative. We were told the beta lies between pi and three pi over two. So that puts it in the third quadrant 
So if it's in the third quadrant, only tangent is going to be positive. All students take calculus. That take the T at the beginning tells us tangent's the only positive ratio. So tangent's going to be positive. We'll leave that as 12 over 5, but sine has to be negative. So I'm going to make sure to include a negative out in front of our 12 thirteenths. All right, from here, now that we've gathered all this information, let's basically just plug it all in and work this down. All right, so a little bit of simplifying in a second, but we've gathered all the information we need. We really just need to fill into these formulas. So sine of alpha, sine of alpha was given to us from the beginning. We can put three over five in that spot. Now we need cosine of beta. Well, cosine of beta was given to us from the beginning as well. That's gonna be negative five over 13. All right, it's up here at the top, plus cosine of alpha. Well, we did a little bit of work to find cosine of alpha up here, but um, we can basically just fill in cosine of alpha was four over five. And finally, sine of beta. Well, we did a little bit of work over here with our triangle with beta and found sine of beta was gonna be negative 12 over 13. From here, it's basically a matter of doing some simplifying down to do this calculation. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply numerators together, negative 15, and multiply denominators together. So we get 65 down here. Plus, as we multiply numerators, we'll get negative 48. And again, multiplying denominators, we get 65. The last bit of simplifying down we can do is we already have a common denominator. Let's combine these fractions together over that common denominator and get negative 63 60 fifths. And that's gonna be our answer here for sine of alpha plus beta. Very similarly over here for cosine of alpha plus beta, uh, we wanna fill in cosine of alpha. Well, cosine of alpha was this calculation we did using our triangle on the left-hand side. So that's four fifths. Cosine of beta, cosine of beta was given to us from the beginning. So negative five over 13. Now we're supposed to subtract sine of alpha. Well, sine of alpha was given to us at the very beginning to be three over five. That was that piece of information from the very beginning given to us. And then finally, sine of beta. Um, well, we calculated sine of beta to be negative 12 over 13. So I'll just fill that in for sine of beta. The rest of this really is just a little bit more simplifying down. So we multiply numerators. I'm going to go negative 20 over multiplying denominator 65. And then being that we have this double negative, the subtraction and the negative, I'm going to go ahead and make that an addition in between these. And then three times 12 makes 36. Five times 13 makes 65. Combining these together, we get 16 65ths. And we've completed the cosine of alpha plus beta. One last one to get here. We want to figure out what's tangent of alpha plus beta. So this relies on tangent of alpha and tangent of beta as we fill in here. So tangent of alpha, as you can see from the top here, is going to be 3 over 4 plus tangent of beta at the top there is positive 12 over 5. This is all divided by 1 minus tangent of alpha, again, is 3 over 4. multiplied by tangent of beta, 12 over five. So we filled in everything. Now it's just a matter of let's do a little bit of reducing down. So to reduce this down, what I'm gonna propose is let's go ahead and just multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing to clear out all these little fractions inside of the big fraction. So if I was looking at all these little denominators, we have a four and a five in our denominator the little denominator in the denominator. And we have a four and a five in the denominators for the little fractions in the numerator. So I think if I multiply by 20 in both the numerator and the denominator, that's like multiplying by one, but that can clear out all these little fractions as we go through. Now you do wanna be careful that this is gonna get distributed. So we wanna do 20 times three fourths. Well, three fourths of 20 is gonna be 15. Plus, as we do 20 multiplied by 12 over five, um, that's gonna simplify down. And this has a factor of five. So it's gonna cancel out with this factor of five. 
In this sense, I'm visualizing this as four times five instead of 20. So the fives cancel and we still have to do the computation of 12 times four is gonna give us 48. And then this is still over 20 needs to be multiplied by the one as we distribute minus 20. As you multiply by all these fractions, we have a four and a five, which makes a 20 in our denominator is going to um, mean dividing by 20 and multiplying by 20, which are inverse operations. So we're going to be left with three times 12, which is going to be 36. The remaining simplifying is going to be 15 plus 48 is going to give us 63 over 20 minus 36 is negative 16. And I don't think we get any more reducing down from there. Um, so hopefully this helps out as you get going on these problems. I would say draw the separate triangles. The separate triangles make a big difference as far as our understanding on this it makes it a lot easier if you just gather all that information from the very beginning and then try to fill into these uh, some or difference identities. It's gonna be very similar for difference identities for these trig functions. All right, good luck.